Hi there, I'm Chris and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be looking at basically getting the car body primed, coloured and clear coated. So to start off, I actually use my tack cloth. I give the body a really good wipe down, getting it to as, as many places as possible to make sure I've got rid of all dust, or debris, anything like that. Just get it all out before any paint goes down. So after a tack cloth, I actually use the anti-static brush just to double check to make sure I got into all the nooks and crannies, all them gaps, just to make sure all the dust, just everything's out. Make sure it's as clean as possible. So here we have the body shell. It's actually had two coats of primer, grey primer as you can see, uh, straight from a spray can. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to record any spraying uh, because I've been an outside sprayer and the weather not being so great. Um, I don't really have the time to get set up outside to record myself. I've got to take that chance and get out there and paint as quick as I can because with this typical British weather, you never know when it's going to start raining or get too cold. So the great thing about a grey primer base is it really helps to show any imperfections you may have missed during the preparation of the body before applying any paint such as you may have missed any mould lines or if anything needs flattening or filling um, but after looking at this giving it a good look over I'm pretty happy with how it's ended up. Next we go down to sanding it down. So now the primer's had several hours to dry um, I'm actually using a P2000 uh, wet and dry sandpaper um, I've got some nice warm water and I just like to just basically remove the roughness of the primer surface and just flatten it, not completely take it back to plastic, but just lightly sand. There's, there's no pressure required. Just literally get that paper in the warm water, get it on there. Doesn't matter how wet it is, the wetter the better. Uh, just guide it. Don't push down, just let the grit of the sandpaper do the work and try to do it all in one motion. So as you can see, I'm going back to front just to try and keep it uniform and equal and hopefully it would reduce the amount of marks left in the primer before applying the colour. To be fair this bit doesn't really take too long like I say you're just, just smoothing it out enough uh, not too smooth not going back to plastic just enough just to take that roughness away from the surface uh, but it's, it's still smooth enough but not completely and utterly 100% smooth it's, you still got something to bite on for the colour when you're laying the colour down um, it, yeah this one this is a pretty quick pretty quick sanding down um, now we're moving on to different parts of the body you tend to find on the arches on, on the rounded edges any high points corners things like that if you're not careful you can quite easily sand quite through it quite quickly um, in this I I do actually burn through just a few small areas, but nothing that will really make me want to go and reprime it all over again. Uh, because they're so minimal and so small, you won't really notice it once you've got a couple of layers of uh, colour down. Uh, just, yeah, again, same as everywhere on the roof, just go nice and lightly, let the grit do the work, and try, if you can, to do it in one direction. I just feel like it, it, it works and looks much better afterwards. So what I'll do now is I'll just speed this up quickly, just get through the wet sanding of the primer coat, and then we'll get on to the next few steps after that.
So once I've finished doing the wet sanding, I give it a rinse under the cold tap with an old toothbrush just to get out any bits of dirt, debris, anything in the panel lines, just to give it, make sure it's nice and debris free. And then once dried up, I get my anti-static brush out just to give it a wipe down. And as you can see, just putting out a few little tiny bits of burn through. And like I said, these bits, they're not too big, so there's nothing too concerning. Uh, it, I don't personally feel it, like it needs a uh, another coat of primer. I'm quite happy with how the surface is nice and smooth now. Just give it a brush down. Whoops dropped it uh, and we'll get on to uh, looking at getting the colour down next We are just getting a bit of tape just to put on the inside of the bumpers to attach it to the bodywork. Uh, I just like to spray all the body parts at the same time, bar spoilers, wing mirrors, um, basically the bodywork and the bumpers. I like to spray them all at the same time, just so it's a, a more even finish. You're not running the risk of uh, tonal difference in the shades of colour. Uh, you know, you're getting the same amount of paint from one to the next. It's not a different amount of coats, different temperatures, different humidities. It's all being done at once, and I just feel like it gives a more nicer, even finish. Um, so we'll just get this bumper on, get it on the stand, again with a double-sided sticky tape, and then we're all ready to go for colour. So here we are after the first coat of colour. Now you may be sitting there thinking, oh that doesn't look right, but it's only a mist coat. You always find the first coat to be a mist coat. You don't need to go for full coverage, you're just putting down that little barrier between the primer coat and the colour. Just something to just the colour just to bite on. Um, as you can see here, this is the second coat. You never go for full coverage on the first. You don't even have to go for full coverage on the second you will get a bit more down uh, it's the third coat which is the important coat where you, you go for full coverage and a nice heavier wet coat obviously not too wet so where you start running or pulling where because if it gets too heavy it pulls away from the panel lines and it, it, it gives like a little uh, it looks like a, it goes back to almost bare plastic in the panel lines because it's just too heavy and it just pulls away so you can see the third coat final coat and I just think it what a beautiful blue this is. I mean, it's only on a grey primer, so I think if it was on to be a, if it was on a gloss white base or even a silver base, I just think the metallic fleck in this paint would really come to life just a, like, a little bit more. Um, this is literally minutes after spraying that colour down, um, so it is still very, very wet. Um, it will look a little bit different after a clear coat. I just had to get this in there. I, I just love this colour that the, the tonal difference between the dark and the light blues is just stunning. Uh, definitely won't be the last time I'll be using Mr. Hobby spray cans, that's for sure. And there we have it. Four coats are clear. Literally just put down. I've had to put it in front of the radiator that's on because, it, because the weather's getting a bit cold now outside. Uh, it, the paint needs a bit of heat just so it can work its magic otherwise it leaves like a horrible satiny sort of eggshell like finish and that is not what you want so this is recorded several hours after laying the clear down it's actually had plenty of time to dry out um, it is only a clear lacquer from a spray can so it's not 2k clear so there is quite a lot of orange peel in it on the as you can see there on the on the roof and on the boot uh, but once it's had a time to dry for the next say week but when it comes to wet sanding it down and polishing it out you'll not notice it'll be there uh, it is quite I'm quite happy with that it's it's gone down really nicely it's laid down pretty nice it's not gonna be too much bother to get that wet sanded down and polished out I can't, I can't wait unfortunately just got to wait a week So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, see you all soon.
Cheers.